They point to the presence of America in the world's imagination, even before America was settled. So where do we begin this story? Uh, history always begins in the middle of things. The Western Hemisphere in which we Americans live was inhabited by people who came from elsewhere, unwilling for the most part to settle for the conditions in which they were born and drawn by the possibility of a new life, of a new chance at life, the lure of freedom, the space to pursue their ambitions in the way that whatever old world they came from did not permit. Uh, the first settlers came across the Bering Straits from uh, northeastern Asia and filtered down into the, settling the continent from the Yukon down to Tierra del Fuego in South America. Uh, we have the evidence of peoples who have vanished since the Inca, the Maya, the Aztecs, the grand civilizations that flourished and flamed out and died uh, in various ways, leaving behind uh, splendid remnants of their, their lives and livelihood. Um, we see in the North American continent earthworks and mounds, burial mounds. They're somewhat mysterious, but that are the remnants of what we would call now native or indigenous peoples. Um, in ordinary American places over the Midwest and the South. Um, we see remnants in the West of the cliff-dwelling peoples, the, the Anasazi, or uh, use a Navajo name, the Pueblo peoples, uh, who are, are no longer there, but have left behind these structures. There's something haunting about this. Uh, these, these civilizations that were and have gone um, it's haunting, too, to think of the earliest explorers before Columbus, the Leif Erikson, who tried to start a colony uh, on the Canadian, what is today the Canadian island of Newfoundland. Uh, he and other Norsemen were uh, trying their best to establish a settlement. Uh, and in a sense, they, are the, they could be called the beginning of American history, but not really. They're more like a false start on American history. And yet, they point to the presence of America in the world's imagination, even before America was settled as an idea, the presence of America as an idea, a land of hope, a land of refuge, a land of opportunity, of that second chance at life for those willing to take it. It may seem a little bit fanciful to attribute that motive to the Asiatic, the first Asiatic uh, immigrants uh, to the Western Hemisphere. They didn't know, we don't know anything about what they were doing. They didn't leave any, any um, remnants to indicate one way or the other what they had in mind. Uh, we do know that the Norse explorers were motivated by an impulse to explore, to find new lands and settle them. Uh, so they were drawn by something more than just necessity. They were drawn by this prospect of a new world, of a new start. And this was true a thousand years after Christ and 500 years before Columbus. There was already a mystique about the West. It was in the literature of antiquity. The ancient Greeks spoke of the Isle of the Blessed. Uh, Homer located the Elysian Fields in the West. That was where uh, the stream of the world's seas flowed. Uh, centuries later, Thomas More's Utopia, Francis Bacon's New Atlantis, these are all uh, expressions of the same theme, the promise of the West. So it's been thought of for a long time as a land of plenty, a land of wealth, a land of hope, of an anticipation of what a new world can be. Thank you for watching. We hope you're enjoying our highlight series and invite you to explore all of Hillsdale College's online courses. They are free and for everyone who loves to learn.